The amazing drama you're about to see is a matter of human record. You may believe it or not, but the real people who lived this story, they believe it. They know. They took that one step beyond. Alcoa presents a new and unusual kind of television program that takes you just beyond the world in which you live. Alcoa presents Aluminum, from the world's leading producer, Aluminum Company of America, who creates new and unusual uses of this wondrous metal for the world in which you do live. And now, John Newland takes you one step beyond. Here in this warm, secure London house, early April 1912, began the bizarre and untold chapter of a news story that would soon stun the civilized world. In this library was an unread book. Coming events cast their shadows before them. Maybe. Remember this book. We'll come back to it later. It might shock you. What's wrong, dear? It was water. Dark water. I was drowning. I couldn't swim anymore. I was drowning. Oh, oh, oh. you just had one of those old-fashioned nightmares. Oh, no. I no. don't blame you all this excitement about the wedding. No wonder. It... Frank was there. And I couldn't find him in the dark. And the water closed in over me. What does it mean? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And in four days you'll be married and in Switzerland on your honeymoon. The happiest bride that ever was. And you can't drown in Switzerland. Nobody ever does. All they do is bang into trees on those foolish skis. But drowning? <laughs> no. It was all so clear to me. And I could feel the water it was like ice now if you must dream i order you to dream only pleasant things eric your wedding dress and how happy you're going to be promise that's better now come on back to bed but i couldn't find him i couldn't find now him. that is enough darling and i shouldn't worry eric with this He's been trying so hard to make everything wonderful for you. There. Now. Good night, dear. And no more nightmares. Good night. Good morning, Emily. Is the future Mrs. Farley about? Grace? Eric. Well. I know it's early, but I wanted to see what my wife would look like in the mornings. Ugly. <laughs> would you like some coffee, darling? I'd love some. You like surprises, don't you, darling? I love them. Come on, surprise me. It's about our honeymoon. The honeymoon? We're not going to Switzerland. We're not? Well, where are we going? We're going to America. To New York City. New York? Eric. Now, why don't you ask me how we're going to get there? Swim? Rowboat? Raft? All right, darling, how? That's how. 
Stateroom 111B, boat deck, right next door to Mr. and Mrs. John Jacob Astor, no less. On the maiden voyage of His Royal Majesty's ship, Titanic, Southampton to New York, six days at sea, next Tuesday. At sea? Oh, just a little sugar, darling. I can't. I can't believe it. I can hardly believe it myself, but the office has connections. Oh, oh you lucky children. You sure you won't miss Switzerland? Oh, Switzerland will keep. But the Titanic, our honeymoon, that's once in a lifetime. The paper's full of nothing but the Titanic. Listen to this, Grace. RMS Titanic, the world's largest and most luxurious liner is writing a new and glamorous chapter in man's conquest of the sea. By virtue of her five watertight compartments, she's being hailed in marine engineering circles as the unsinkable ship. Her first passenger list makes her a floating home for royalty, statesmen, international society, and stars of the theater and the arts. And, and Mr. and Mrs. Eric Farley, who are absolutely unknown. And absolutely in love. Grace! Grace! Grace, what is it, darling? It happened again. I dreamed. No, now, darling, I do wish you wouldn't. I saw the sea, cold sea. Oh. There were people struggling in the water. Really? Thinking, dying. Grace. And then a huge ship slid down. Down. Now, it's just a bad dream. Besides, that ship couldn't be the Titanic. The Titanic can't sink. Everyone knows that. I saw a lifeboat tossing in the water. Grace. There were letters on the side of it. I saw. Really so did. clearly I saw the word Titanic on the side of the boat. I did. 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 Your intuition should tell you that what you see next is not a dream. It can come true. Just what I've always wanted. <laughs> Only my own dear Aunt Agatha would have guessed. Have you ever kept birds, my darling? Uh, neither have I. Have you ever thought of keeping birds? Neither have I. And by all means, write dear Aunt Agatha and tell her she's made us very, very happy. I will. I know all about last night. And the night before that. Mother told you. I suppose you think I, I've gone off my head, one of those silly, hysterical women. I think you're a lot overtired and a little over-imaginative. But this isn't my imagination. Believe me, I saw it. I saw it. Now, that is silly. You don't believe what you see in your sleep? I mean, unless you're a gypsy. Grace, do you trust me? You know I do. Then don't spoil the happiest time of our whole lives just because of a bad dream. Everything's going to be all right, I promise. I'll take care of you always. Oh, hold me tight, darling. You know, if I didn't know you so well, I'd think that you'd fall in love with another man, that you didn't want to marry me. I couldn't love anybody but you. Very well, I believe you. Only remember, if there ever is another man, I was one of the best shots in the Coldstream Guards. Are you asleep? I think I 
will keep a bird after all. I beg your pardon? That would please your Aunt Agatha, wouldn't it? Terribly. Did you have any particular species in mind? Oh, a lovebird, of course. Oh, naturally, lovebird. Thank you, darling. What for? The six most perfect days of my life. How lovely you are. And very young. It would be even better days. Forgive me, haven't you, for those silly scenes I made? I've forgotten the whole thing. I'm glad. Such awful, ridiculous dreams. It wasn't a dream at all. I was wide awake when I felt there was something wrong with the ship. Quite wrong. I know you'll laugh. And I don't blame you. I was in my cabin this afternoon. I imagine it was around four o'clock when I heard this terrible sound. What kind of sound? It was a terrible grinding sound, as though the ship had suddenly struck some immovable object. The whole boat seemed to tremble with the impact. Tell me, by any chance, did you hear anything or feel anything? No, no, I heard nothing like that, I'm happy to say. You know, it's probably your imagination, or uh, more likely, indigestion. <laughs> Now, why don't you see the ship's doctor? He's a good man, I'm told. Oh, I'm all right physically. It's just that for the first time in my life, I'm... I'm afraid. I'm afraid even for the next few hours. I don't know what I'm afraid of. It's as though something in my... In my soul. You know, if I weren't such a hard-headed realist and I were at home, I think I'd call on my minister. As the mighty ship raced through the Atlantic night, there were others far away, who felt dark premonitions of disaster. For one, a Methodist minister in Winnipeg, Canada. Excuse me, Dr. Morgan, but it's nearly time for the service. Miss Parsons, I'd like the congregation to sing hymn number 446 four, tonight. But, Dr. Morgan, the hymns for tonight are already posted in the church, and the organist... Please, 446. Four, I didn't know that was one of your favorite hymns. It isn't. I don't even know the words. I simply know that we must sing it tonight. Hear, Father, while we pray to thee for those in peril on the sea. Better we should be praying for our farmers after a winter like this.
What is it, darling? Nothing. You're cold. Come to bed. At precisely the same time in New York City, still a thousand miles away, a magazine illustrator named Harry Teller felt a weird compulsion. I don't know what's wrong with me. Harry, what's this? I thought you were supposed to be drawing pretty girls in the new spring styles. You'll never make the deadline now. I don't know how it happened. I was, I don't know, helpless. Something seemed to be guiding my hand. I can't explain it. You're tired. You've been working too hard. Now, come on. No. No, it's not that. Harry, let's go to bed. You this drawing. It's awful. I don't know who would want it. Do you know something? This is the best work you've ever done. I've never seen you do anything like this before. All of this detail in here. And... Harry, what is it? Your hands are like ice. The water in the drawing was cold. Icy cold. Listen carefully, we will prove our ability to transfer our thoughts to you. It's all right now. You come out to bed. I understand. I was sleeping. Someone was screaming, hurry, that we need warm clothes. And I, I must... What's wrong with me? I must be losing my mind. Oh. I'm losing my mind. Oh. You're driving me out of mind, you know. Look. I'm not John Jacob Astor or, or a member of the nobility. I've saved for two years for this trip, wanting it to be a perfect honeymoon and to have it spoilt by such childish nonsense. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Eric. I'm sorry, Eric. All right, darling, you're forgiven. I just don't make a habit of fishing my best clothes on the floor. Get ahead. Engine 
seems to have stopped. Are you all right? Oh, Stuart. Sure. The engine seemed to have stopped. What was it? There was some report of an iceberg, sir. The captain stopped the vessel, sir, just to be on the safe side, you know. What an incredible ship. What service? They run out of ice at the bar, so what happens? We hit an iceberg. Good fresh ice. That's what I like. It's all over the deck. Have a drink, chum. No, thank you. Never seen an iceberg, darling. Shall we go and have a look? Yeah, that's a good idea. We'll wrap up. Good morning. Captain's orders, go to your lifeboat station. Please dress warmly. Now, there's no need to panic. Just take it nice and easy. It's just a precaution, darling. Remember what the captain said tonight? The ship that nothing in the world could sink? What are you doing? Trying to impress an iceberg with your jewels? Just in case, do my not be coming back? Oh, come on. other women in boat four. I'm sorry. I love our marriage. All six days, five hours and twenty minutes of it. I even loved our first fight. Don't you ever have another bad dream? I'll listen to you. Every word. Come, come, madam. It, it, it's all right, it's all right. Farley never came back to this house. Over 1,500 people perished that dreadful night aboard the Titanic. Eric Farley was among them. You've seen some of the unexplained supernatural events surrounding the life and death of a great ship. Now, do you remember this book? It's a novel published in 1898, 14 years before the ill-fated vessel was even dreamed of. The title, Futility. Its author, Morgan Robertson. It's a story about the largest liner ever built, carrying on its maiden voyage the rich and great of the world. Then, on an April night, it struck an iceberg. The vessel in this book was 70,000 tons. The Titanic, 66,000 tons. The length of the ship in these pages, 800 feet. The Titanic, 882 feet. Both made 25 knots. Both carried about 3,000 passengers. Both liners had lifeboats for only a fraction of that number. And both were considered unsinkable. Oh, one more thing. The author called his ship the Titan. In a moment, something else to think about. A 
about next week? Well, it begins with a silly argument about this hat. And it ends when two people in peril, miles apart, discover an amazing kind of communication, an incredible way of finding each other, as together they take that one step beyond. <laughs>